The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. What do we need to be testing for? Of course, M, P, and K comes yeah. right to mind, but is well, it, does it stop there? Yeah, so nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur are really the, the big ones. But you also want to do occasionally, if you don't have micronutrient problems, maybe test for micronutrients once every five years. If you do have problems with micronutrients, like for example, copper in central Alberta on the black or gray soils or transition soils, you might want to be checking for that every year. Um, so micronutrients are important, but we don't have widespread micronutrient problems, but it's something you want to keep an eye on all the time. But micronutrients are often overpromoted. but if you test, at least you know where you're at and then get to a couple of opinions from a couple of different agronomists if you do have a recommendation for it. The other thing that I like to see farmers test for is simply soil pH. Uh, pH can change very dramatically uh, yeah. ac across one of our sites just south of Lethbridge where we did variable rate fertilizer. We had um, uh, 16 different uh, benchmarks and soil pH ranged from 5.3 to 7.8 depending on where you were on the slope position. So pH can change quite dramatically with, with topography and uh, so that's something you want to keep an eye on. But is your soil pH slowly dropping? As we're using nitrogen and sulfur fertilizers over the years, they are acidifying and your soil pH will slowly drop. And if you're using no-till where you're not mixing your, the, the top couple of inches of soil with the rest of your topsoil, then that pH can start to drop fairly significantly, which can then have a negative effect on uh, nitrogen fixing the uh, bacteria with our legume crops, like yeah. uh, our pulse crops. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, Particularly in the southern prairies, we do have some problems with uh, soil salinity. So doing a, a test called electrical conductivity, or EC, mm -hmm. is always wise. And if you're in certain levels, uh, if you're below one, you're fine. But once you creep up to, to three or four, you can start losing uh, 20 to 40 percent of your yield potential, depending on the crop. And if you're up to, you know, five or six or seven, you can lose so you lose significant yield potential, but you still don't see any weight on the fields. So that's what I call hidden salinity, but the soil test will show that up. And even things like soil organic matter, you know, that's, you know, organic carbon people are very concerned about. And you can have, you can have the lab do that too. Uh, most labs don't use a really precise lab, uh, test, but they'll at least give you an indication of are you 2%, 4%, or 6%, which is nice to know. And when you do get all those recommendations and those numbers and results back, then you've got to kind of make a decision what you're going to yeah. do with it. And actually, just before we talk about that, I should mention that, you know, you want to also want to make sure the lab you send your samples to are going to be doing the right analyses. So for example, with phosphorus, uh, different labs use different methods. In Manitoba, the recommended method is the, the Olson method or sodium bicarbonate method. That's where they've done all their calibrations for and that's what they recommend. In Alberta, oh, in the early 90s, we looked at a number of different soil tests for phosphorus. We identified the modified Kelowna method as the one that gave us the best accuracy. And that's the one that we would recommend. And so the recommendations we have now for phosphorus, not only would we make a recommendation, we can also give you a, a probability of response. Is it a 90 or a 70 or a 40% probability of response based on the research we did? But if the lab doesn't use, the, it's a lab you send your samples to, doesn't use a modified clone method, if they use the Bray or the Olson, you're gonna get a much uh, less accurate recommendation. So that's, and that's not acceptable in my opinion. So right. always make sure the lab is using the, um, analyses that are recommended for Alberta, Saskatchewan, or Manitoba. Okay, very, very good point. And you, can you ask a lab specifically, hey, what, what method are you Absolutely. using and here's and, what I'd like you to and use? And hopefully they, they, they will report the methods on their soil test report. And if, you see, if you're from Alberta and you see your, the, it was the Olson or the, uh, the Bray method used, well, you might want to say, well, in the future mm -hmm. I, want a, I want the modified clone. And most labs will, will make that adjustment. What could be the difference in the results between the methods? Huge, actually. Uh, for example, the Bray method is a strong acid extractant and um, it was designed by Bray and Kurtz back in 1945 for acid soils. And it worked fine on acid soils, but if you have a if your pH range of your soil ranges from 5.5 to 7.5, well, uh, it might work better at the lower pHs, but not better at the higher pHs. As a matter of fact, it, just, it performs very poorly once you're above 7.0, like pH mm. of 7. But the Olson method, uh, that, p that method is they use sodium bicarbonate, they buffer to a pH, the, the, the extractants buffer to a pH of 8.5, and it works reasonably, actually works quite well on high pH soils above 7, but if you start using it on a pH of 6 or 5.5, uh, all the work that uh, Olson did back in, that, was, that method uh, was developed back in about 1954, and 
it was designed for high pH soil. So, but if you use the, the modified Kelowna, and that's one reason why I like it, it's a weak acid extract and highly buffered, so it's not really affected by soil pH. Oh, it, so, so it really becomes very important to make sure you're using the right methods. I, I promise you, there's a lot of people listening and watching this. They're like, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I promise you that for and, sure. And to be honest, there's a lot of agronomists that don't even know that. And, and that's so. We, there's a lot of things that uh, we really want to make, make sure we do. If we do all those things well, you're going to get huge value from your soil test. Yeah. So to get true value out of that soil test, then we got to take those results and then do something with the information. Then we have to interpret them correctly. Yeah, absolutely. so how, how do we make sure that we don't uh, make some missteps at this point? Well, once uh, the farmer gets his, his results back, he's gonna be working with his agronomist to develop his fertilizer recommendations. But one of the things he could do is a double check if you go to the Alberta Agriculture website. Um, the, the Agdex is on phosphorus, uh, potassium, sulfur, and micronutrients. I was the one that wrote those. And you can download them and read them. And I updated most of them before I retired. So those are the most up-to-date recommendations we have. And there's been very little fertilizer research in Alberta or Saskatchewan or Manitoba to really be looking at updating a lot of the recommendations. There's always little bits of work going on, but we're doing less and less. Farmers are spending more and more money on fertilizer, but we're doing less and less fertilizer research yeah. and then pumping that into uh, that, that uh, information into the labs. Our, our mistakes get more expensive. Absolutely. And, yeah. and the information we have, sadly, uh, you're referring to is becoming older and older and older, kind of like me, the information is getting older and older. <laughs> but it's great information, Ross. Well, it's still good, and, and I'd like to think I'm still doing okay for an old guy. But we're, that's, that's my, my biggest criticism today of research is that we're not keeping up. We're having, where there's great work with uh, new varieties and new cropping systems, mm -hmm. but we're not doing the field research with the uh, N, P, K, S, and micros to keep our recommendations up to speed for farmers. That's my, my greatest criticism. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Ross, I really appreciate you joining us here today. This has been a lot of fun, and uh, we'll definitely uh, do it again sometime very soon. Mm -hmm.